Welcome to the Strong Coach Podcast. I'm Mike Bledsoe here with Danny Rios and Ben Walker. And today we're going to talk about how to build your coaching business. Before we get into that, head over to the strongcoachpodcast.com and check out our three step coaching business tune up. So once you get all the information here, you can apply it in the coaching business tune up and build the coaching business of your dreams. Yeah, baby. And it's free, it's a free download. So when you go over there, all you got to do is exchange the email. We can start having a conversation. That's how it works. Um, some of the thing, One of the reasons we want to do this is there's a few different types of people out there that are interested in this topic. One are the people who want to have a coaching business, and they've never done it before. And uh, if you've never done it before, that, that's likely the hardest place to start. What are some of the issues you see with people who've never started a coaching business before, but that's what they want? What's the next step? and really how long they think it takes for them to create this business. Uh, oftentimes, uh, they see it as five-year, 10-year out, and you look at the numbers and what's possible, uh, and really it's uh, some of the, th the things they're imagining takes a couple months. And it also, it because so much of this is not like readily available all out there, it, it can get confusing with, with all the different things you need to do and you get paralysis by analysis and like, oh, what's this step? How does marketing work? What's, what's an SEO? And once you figure that out, it's actually a very simple system that you can follow and you could build a coaching business for anything with that. Yeah. Another, another segment of people who are interested in this topic are people who they have a coaching business, but it's not making the kind of money they wanted. Or I, I remember for myself, I had a coaching business. I got the amount of clients and members in my gym that I thought was going to satisfy me and was going to pay the bills. And then once I got there, I realized that there was all these things I didn't consider. And so uh, I, I imagine a lot of other people that are listening to this, they're just not making the amount of money they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, one of the big things that I see is coaches don't know what the next step is to take. Um, and it's going to be different for everybody. Uh, and, and so knowing where you're at and where you need to go, uh, can save you a lot of time. Yeah. And then there's uh, there's those. I, I, we run the trainers. We have them. They come to us, and they may have a full book of business. They're very busy, but they're just not fulfilled. Or, you know, we, we've had one client that I'm, that I'm aware of where she's making more money than anybody else where she's coaching. She's busier than everybody else, sells more than anybody else, but has a hard time taking vacation or doing it the way she really wants to do it. And so that's another, that's another type of coach. I, I know that there's a lot of coaches out there that they want to go do it on their own. And I warn them, I go, okay, you've had it. If you've been working for somebody else, you've had it really easy. You've had to do one job. You're about to take on 10 new jobs. And it's very, very possible, and it's totally worth it. It's totally worth doing it. But know what you're getting yourself into and go into it with the education necessary to make it happen well. Mm -hmm. Or, or the focus uh, into what you're creating. And oftentimes, uh, uh, one of the big things we see in coaches is they don't have that end in sight. And they know they want to build a business, and it's leading to nothing. It's leading to, oftentimes what it is, it's leading to their passion, uh, but not how they want to live their lifestyle or really the type of impact they want to have. So uh, once coaches start setting the focus on how that looks, um, now they, they start creating more of that end point. Like, where are we actually even taking this business? Uh, mo most coaches that I talk to want to get into business, and that's all they know. And, and they just cap out into creating past that. Yeah, that they, do, they do it like the guy down the street. It's like, oh, I'm going to create a business. I'm just going to do it the way they do it, not realizing they're not fulfilled either. Mm -hmm. um, and then they, they get into it, and maybe the business even does what they want it to do but then realize that they've sacrificed their entire personal life. There's, there's a vision for the business, but not a vision for what they want out of it. And then next thing you know, it's like, oh, I'll do anything to make it work. Mm -hmm. And then anything to make it work is 12 hour days, seven days a week, and with no end in sight. It, it typically leads uh, with sacrificing and settling for, yeah. for a lot of coaches and, and, and major parts of their lives. Uh, relationships, it happened to me when I opened up my gym. Um, I, I didn't have a clear end in sight, and it put me in a situation where the business that I had created was in alignment with how I wanted to live my life. And But I hit everything that I wanted to do with my business. Uh, I just never considered how my life was going to look. So. Yeah, I, I had all my relationships when I owned my gym. 
all my relationships existed inside the gym mm-hmm. and nothing outside and even even romantic relationships and it was just it was hard mm-hmm. <laughs> it was really <laughs> fucking hard yeah. it did not work you know it worked for it worked by my standards then but it wouldn't work by my standards now it's like no this 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 is not fulfilling enough for me yeah, it's. Um, I guess you could say it's like a, a business with codependencies. <laughs> when, when you're when you're in a business that way, that it's not, not you're not able to separate yourself from business to do business, uh, and and that was a lesson that I learned. Uh, once I learned to separate myself from my gym, I started acting different around it. You know, so. How did you go about that process? Uh, th- there's not one clear thing I could pinpoint to. It was in a float session and, uh, I had some THC in my body and, <laughs> and I had a moment where I experienced a lot about death, uh, around my mother, around my mom is fine. She's healthy, strong. Uh, but just, d- uh, bring that into my attention and, and that started making a connection to me in the gym. Um, and, and realized how much I was, my personal self was the gym. And in the process of, of me t- having conversations with myself about my mom's death, it started bringing other things that I'm related to and it's just death in general. So it's separating that what used to be to create something new uh, allowed me to just think differently and consider my life more and, and not necessarily just fully pulling up, putting everything in my business. And, and actually, hey, like I, I matter and the person that's investing all of it putting all their energy and the risk involved in business like i actually matter and that took me some some time to to step into you know we're gonna you're gonna hear a lot about training camp for the soul uh for me that was a place where i was able to step out of uh guilt and shame and into loving my life and 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 so it had to do it had to be a lot of things for me to get to that point uh specifically none of it business related different experiences for sure yeah you had that experience ben yeah, I, a lot of it comes down to to stories for me is the story of what what a coaching business looks like, what a business looks like, what even what coaching looks like. Yeah, is it? I got to help you out. Oh, there it is. There so you go. There learn, it is. Learning from the master. Uh, so you, there's like the story of the gym. I was like, oh, grind, 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 live in the gym, teach all these classes. Um and, and, you know, it's like Don Miguel Ruiz writes about the, the dream of the, the planet. That's not – it's the dream of everyone else. It might not be your dream, and you're just living into that dream that other people have told you is supposed to be your dream. So then you get you get in there, and you're like, I'm supposed to like this. Why don't I like this? It's because you're not supposed to like it. Mm-hmm. If like if that's not in alignment for you. So it's it comes down to getting getting the story right of, like, maybe you do want to own a gym. Do you actually want to live in it? All the time? I mean, you, you literally lived in I your did. gym. Eight months. <laughs> Eight months. Yeah. And was that your dream? No. <laughs> no. It was It was embarrassing. But then I would remind myself, I was like, Arnold lived in the gym. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger mm-hmm. lived in the gym. So, you know, I'll do it. Something great will come with us. And I wasn't wrong. But <laughs> I don't think it was because I was living in the gym. Uh, that was the level of commitment I was at. But I was also the level of suffering I was experiencing. Mm. Because I couldn't afford rent at a house. And I was dumping. I, I didn't know how to manage the money well enough to make that happen. I didn't understand how to get clients and have a business model that was profitable enough for me to even have an apartment. So I think a lot of times people have this assumption of like, oh, I only need to make X amount of dollars. But like, you know, that's that's going to keep shifting. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, I only need like a one bedroom apartment. Well, until you find someone you want to live with and maybe have kids and then it starts expanding. It's like, oh, there's a college thing. Which I would not recommend, but you know, people, people, these are the considerations they're starting to make as yeah. they get older. And you know, when I was in my my mid twenties and I was opening the gym, I didn't make any of those considerations. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, whatever, it'll it'll work itself out. You know, if I work hard, it'll work itself out. And it didn't. It didn't work itself out. I had to do a lot of work. To I had to make a lot of changes. I thought I thought things were just going to start happening for me because I was working hard, and that's not how it works. You have to work intentionally, um, and you have to work smart, and then that effort that you do put in has the results that you really want. So I think the work hard mentality that's being preached by a lot of influencers could be good if you're a lazy fuck, but my experience in most coaches is that's not the case. They're not lazy, they just don't know what to do next. Mm-hmm. 
And that's why the perfect day is so important. It's like the first thing that we have anyone do in the 90 day program is where do you want to go? And I remember the funny thing when I did my perfect days, I, I told Danny about it. And he was like, Hey Ben, there wasn't any coaching in that perfect day. I was like, Oh, you're right. There, there's, there's probably a version of myself further down the line that's not doing that. So then you have to, when you have that perfect day, then you know where you're going because if you don't know where you're sailing, then no wind is favorable. So then that's how you can then structure your business with that perfect day in mind. Yeah. You, you can start thinking about, and this is a process that I've seen Mike uh, do growing the strong coach is f- for, for you to live the life that you want to live is how does your business need to look? Um, so watching that and, and, and that's a perfect example is like if you don't see yourself coaching, you can still own a coaching business. You just don't have to do all the coaching yourself. Right. Um, and oftentimes coaches don't even fathom that idea that, oh, like I don't have to do all the work yourself. It's like, no, you, you could actually have a bigger impact if you're able to delegate and create a team to do that. So uh, which is you know what we do. It's we have a stellar group of coaches and um, Mike's not doing all the coaching himself. And every, everybody's still growing and learning, so. Yeah, well, you know, and the type of coaching. Like, mm-hmm. I, I graduated out of coaching movement to coaching business and marketing to, I still do that to a degree, but the majority of where my coaching comes in, like, I, I have a whole team to, de- uh, to deliver business coaching, marketing, financial stuff, all the, the bits and pieces. And where my interest is at is more leadership coaching. I still coach the other things. Hell, I even get someone, I usually personal train someone once a month on movement because it just, I get a kick out of it. I love them. Like, oh yeah, I get to like flex this muscle and it's, it's fun to keep it going. But when I, when I'm really happy is, oh, I'm coaching leadership. And in that case, that's way more fun. So there's a ladder that to climb, but you have to spend enough time coaching one thing before you graduate into the other. And if you would have told me that a decade ago, that this is what I'd be interested in coaching, I would have not even been able to fathom it. I would have gone, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's something that we see a lot in uh, athletes as well, is they, they go through, like, athlete, coach, um, and then they realize, like, a lot of times from going from athlete to coach, is like, oh, my body can't take this on forever. And, and it happens a lot with uh, the coaching style that we do. Oftentimes when people are setting goals that we're talking about 10 years out, and they're they're worried how it's going to happen. It's like you have no clue what's going to happen between now and those 10 years. So just go ahead and write it down um, because that's going to give you an end point so you could get to it. Um, and the style of coaching that you're doing now, the style of coaching that I do now, is very similar path as, as Mike's. I, I'm a, away from the movement and I love to still teach movement. Uh, yet I, it's more for, it's become more back to for fulfilling for me to teach others is not no longer my a career that I pursue. It's it's more for my own personal fulfillment. Yeah. And that's the thing with coaching that my my mind has been opened to the last year is all the different ways you can be a coach. Like I was seeing it as oh I'm I'm a I'm a movement coach, so I'm I'm just coaching people on movement and then I had the opportunity to coach someone on personal development when I did the mentorship program. I was like, "Oh, I like this too." I can do this as well. And I mean, there's, there's sex coaches. There's, there's any number of, of coaches. Mostly sex coaches. Of, it's a lot of sex coaches. <laughs> <laughs> but like, the, and I mean, there's, there's, there's coaches in fields that no one. I like how that was the, I can't leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> like, you like, know, there's all types, you know, sex coaches. <laughs> uh, nutrition coaches. There's yeah, coaches nutrition for coaches. There's, there's a house full. We're basically that, in the strong coach uh, frat house. Like this is where our minds go. <laughs> Any, anything, anything that a human does, there's a coach out there for it. it uh, yes, to, to, that's, to, to that's help a better you way to put it. In your journey, uh, make it faster. Uh, you know, support you where you're at. There's coaches for everything. And it's a quick. It's the quickest way to get there. Mm-hmm. You know, I think a lot of times people go, "Oh, I need to read a book or watch a YouTube video to figure out how to do it." I'm like, "Nah." Uh, if I know I'm truly interested in the thing, I just go hire a coach for it. If it's something I'm dabbling in, yeah, I'll read a book about it or this or that. But yeah, coaching is the way to go. What are some of the what are the the stages of development for a business owner that you guys have seen? Someone is starting their coaching business and they've never done it before. What's that look like? All the way to they're able to their their business they can take a month off from work and 
come back and the business has grown? I'll, I'll, sh- I'll, sh- I'll share with you my, my personal experience with this. Uh, uh, for me, you know, early on, and then the way the way I like to teach it to to the coaches we work with is your 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 business is like like a human, and early on when your your business is brand new, you're, it's gonna need a lot of attention from you, uh, just like a baby would. And as the baby keeps growing to an infant, to a child, to a teenager, it's less less and less attention. Full on adult, they're independent, they're doing their thing, everything's working. Uh, so one of the big things that happens early on is baby's crying. Baby pooped his pants. Coach is trying to feed it, or business owner is trying to feed it. Where you're, you're, you're putting the energy where it doesn't need to be in. Uh, early on, when I started coaching, I was doing everything in the gym. Like the gym literally was my baby. I took care of everything. Uh, and as I continue, and and there's a lot of things I just it was because where the stage was out of the business. Um, I couldn't outsource things and now it would be much different. Like there's ways that you could do it now by being creative and playing with business, but that's, that's a different story. Um, how you grow your, your business is going to be very dependent also where you're at as a person. And then little by little, you start implementing systems and all of a sudden the business is doing things for itself. It's, 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 it's obtaining leads for itself. Your website is doing its thing. It's looking good. You hire some support to help you uh, on the back end of things. And so all of a sudden you're not having to put so much attention on like making sure you're just feeding the baby. You got to make sure now to like secure the perimeters, right? And, so, hi- and hiring support doesn't, it's not a big thing where you have to hire five people full time. There's so many freelancers out there that you could hire, you know, they might only work for you 10 hours a month. Mm-hmm. And, but having someone who's an expert at that thing come in and support you is definitely something that's necessary once you get, Especially once you get beyond the six-figure range. What happened uh, for me was I knew there was a system that I wanted for my gym, uh, Barbell uh, Barbell Logic, the mm-hmm. uh, earlier system that um, that you that you guys were involved with, and I was waiting for that thing uh, so I could afford it because I knew what it was going to do for my business. So it, it was just a patience game. Like I, I knew what number I had to hit. As soon as I hit that number, I uh, I made the purchase. It was it was, it was the perfect thing to do because it automated sales and marketing for me i didn't have to do it i didn't have to go and build the funnels on the emails and none of that that taught me how to like plug and play business and like truly like showed me what a sales nurturing process was and that's like what i do now if i didn't buy that system then to understand how like the whole picture of sales worked i wouldn't have would be where i'm at right now so waiting for me to make that give it the attention that the business needed at the time that launched me to eventually step away from like I got to the point where my business I didn't have to coach anymore I I was just I was I got to live my life and it's like oh wait I didn't plan for this and and so that's how the the everything was working well got the business to the point where I wanted and then all of a sudden it wasn't matching my life so uh, in, in the different stages of development is is super important to to your business is going to grow as long as as long as you're doing the work even if you're not quite focused on the right thing it will grow it's faster if you if you know the path that you're uh, going down for me the thing that was missing that i know now is to take considerations on how i want my life to look like depending on that business uh yeah and and and, and this evolution of your business you want to know exactly what your business needs at what time and and oftentimes you know if you haven't done it before it's going to be hard to know um, you see first-time parents sometimes they get a little frantic uh, and and so uh, think of it that way and and think about nurturing and giving your business that whatever it is that the business need at the moment i like to think about business as a child as well and going back to what our previous conversation around how do you separate yourself from the business is i i had a problem early on which was i associated my own personal value with what was happening in the business and then when I started treating the business as if it were a child that was growing up, I realized, no, the business wants to do its own thing. Mm-hmm. And then I get to guide it and help it. But I don't get to decide that it's going to play the piano or play football. It's going like, to gravitate towards something. Mm-hmm. The strong coach did that. And so the more I'm able to run a business where I'm listening to what the business wants and lets it do what it wants to do, um, it's a lot easier. The other thing is, is if you're setting up systems where you don't have to be involved in every aspect of the business, it's way easier to listen to it as well. Because mm-hmm. if, you're, if you're in it doing everything, you're so invested in it hourly per week that it does feel like it's you. The business isn't you. Mm-hmm. It's, some, it's another thing. It's a baby. 
or a child. And uh, for me, it was, oh, put the systems in place. Oh, that that means the child's growing up. Like the the you get certain systems, you get the the right uh, sales funnels in place, all that kind of stuff. And now it's you know nine, ten years old. Mm -hmm. And then when when things are hit a scalable point, you'll you'll hit puberty. Mm -hmm. And then you know you might hit some hiccups in there. There's always hiccups coming in the future. Yeah, pu right. puberty as in like fucking walking the park. So <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's putting in those systems is what matures the business. If you're the one that's doing everything all the time, it's it stunts the growth. And you know, we I think a lot of people think, oh, it would be great to work in my own facility for ten hours a day. I don't care. It's so awesome. I'm like, well, in five years, check back in. You will wish that it had grown up. Mm -hmm. So you're like, oh, I love my baby. I hope you've heard mom say that. Mm -hmm. I hope my baby stays just the way they are. I'm like, good fucking luck. Or you get yeah. a puppy dog. Uh, you don't want that Rottweiler to get to 100 pounds, mm -hmm. but it does. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's gonna grow. Mm -hmm. Um, or or die. So, <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's the nature of it. Yeah, it's, it's, that's it, 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 business exactly. has its own life, and and uh, yeah, just surrender to it, and yeah, let it do its thing, and and you're there to hone it down, and and watch it do its thing, absolutely. And and speaking of the like giving your business what it needs is that sometimes it's going to need less of you. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is a common <laughs> conversation with my coach. I have a I have a coach. And there's just the right amount of presence to have in the business. And if I get over present, I fuck shit up. And if I check out for too long, then things start going slow. Because, like, how, how does an adolescent child respond when their parents are checking in with them all the time? It's like, come on, mom. Yeah. Let me live my life. And that, I mean, that's how a business will respond, too. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fight back at you if you're too overbearing with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's the most common issue. By the way, I leave for 10 days. <laughs> I'm going off the grid. And I know the business will grow while I'm gone. The business will grow while you're gone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks to you guys. <laughs> we'll hold it down. <laughs> Thank you. You taught us how to do this <laughs> thing. <so. laughs> Give yourself a pat on the back. All right. <laughs> pat on the back. Um, another reason we want to tackle this topic of how to grow a coaching business is there's a lot of conflicting information out mm -hmm. there. And uh, it's it's tough, man. Like again, if all you do, I say this conflicting information. All information is available at your fingertips all the time mm -hmm. with these devices. And the I, Paul Check said it so well. He goes, "We are coming out of an information age and going into a context age. And if you don't understand the context, that information is fucking useless." Mm -hmm. And so this is where coaching comes in so handy. This is why if you're a coach, your clients need you. They know they don't need to eat donuts. They know that, you know, they should lift some weights. They should all this. But the context is where are you right now? If you're thinking about an athlete, where are you right now? And how do we get you to move towards the goal that you, that you have? That's your context. And it's like, okay, now this specific information is applicable to you right now. This is the next step. There's a million things you could do if you were to choose it yourself, but a good coach is going to come in and do that and add that con take that con create the context and then hand you steps as well. Mm -hmm. So there's so much conflicting information out there. Everyone should be doing for themselves what they're suggesting they, their clients do, which is hire a coach and mm -hmm. work that way. So because there's so much conflicting information, you know, hire a coach. It doesn't have to be us. There's plenty of other coaches out there that are almost as good and <laughs> <laughs> they can you know, sex coaches and maybe, especially. And maybe, <laughs> maybe you graduate to a strong coach afterwards. Hire a sex coach to help you with your business. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, and, and with this topic, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty cool what we have here is Mike uh, built a gym, grew the gym, and while he was growing Barbell Shrug, that's when I stumbled on, onto Mike. And it was actually one of the early episodes that I found. Uh, you guys were talking about business and and opening up a gym. I think it was episode seventy three. That episode, <laughs> that that <laughs> just <Damn>. blew. <laughs> that episode changed my life because it started. It, it put me in the world of business where I I wasn't letting myself go in there before. And from there, I, I really enjoy business. I've I've never been like shy from it. Early on in my coaching career, it, it was like fifty percent business, fifty percent coaching for me. And a lot of it was because what the information you guys were sharing there, like you got to like 
take care of all of it, not just, just focus on one single thing. Uh, you know, so I learned how to open up my gym a lot from you guys, live retreats, all that fun stuff. And um, as you kept evolving as, as a coach and what you were creating, a product like the Strong Coach comes out where my man Ben gets to go through this process, this like super precise focus process, and he could build a whole different coaching business than I did. Yeah. I wish I wish it had gone his route. Right. Because it would have been uh, more precise, quicker. He, he got access to the life he wanted faster than I did. Because we started with the end in sight. And I even had the opportunity to co-own a gym mm -hmm. and, and then realized, oh, wow, where my life is going is great. And owning a gym is, is not in alignment mm -hmm. with that yeah, to and this be able is, to step away. This is the context. And if you, don't do, if you don't have a really solid goal setting process, you have no foundation for context. Mm -hmm. And I, that's why I warn people away from just adopting a system. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, here's my method. My 10 steps, da, da, da. Cool. I've done that before. I built it. It made money. And then I realized I fucking hated it. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't even want to do this in the first place. It just made the money. And now the effort it would take to sustain it and all this is just not worth it. Mm -hmm. So uh, we make sure we really, you're, from the very beginning, you're building the thing that you want to build that is actually going to be satisfying. And then, and then you're going to be happy with it. I don't know what I'm saying. You'll be, you'll be yeah. satisfied with the, the yeah. end process. I had another point. And I forgot it. And, <laughs> and you can try on different things as well. Uh, what, right. I, can, I can imagine a, a previous Ben being like, oh, but I have to figure everything out now. Um, and it, it's, it's okay to try things and then go, no, this wasn't it. And, and there's, no, there's no failure in that because it totally could be the sunk cost of like, oh, this is, this is the path I've chosen. I have to do this thing. No, as soon as you don't like the thing, you can say, okay, I will switch to something else. And there's everything right with that. Yeah, there's a lot of people that would that could look at what happened in the Strong Coach business in the last year and look at the numbers and this and that and look at it and go, yeah, you, you lost 50 grand or more on dumb shit. And I'd go, I learned a lot. Those were lessons. <laughs> yeah. Those were, that's just how much the lesson costs, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, it, it was cheaper than most people's college. Mm -hmm. and the lesson is way more uh, valuable. But, and I'm okay with that. Like, I have, I'm excited that that happened. I'm like, oh, yeah, I mean, in the year before that, I lost a bunch of money in the year before that. I made more than that, but I look at it and go, oh, these mistakes, they get expensive. And mm -hmm. if you don't have a really great relationship with money, when you do take those losses, you know, a lot of times people shut down. Mm -hmm. So one of the tricks to being a really good business owner and an entrepreneur is having the emotional resilience to when something happens like that, removing yourself from it and look being very objective. And those are the people who end up being successful. And that's that's some of the stuff that we really love to dig in on and talk, talk about. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and, and one of the whole aspects on like how to actually build this um, and it's a principle that we teach in the strong coaches uh, to reverse engineer things and then start from the inside out. Yeah. Start, start within self and let that ripple out to your clients, your services. And, and, and for me is the style which I love to teach. And it's the style that I learned a very hard lesson because now I see coaches like yourself that is like, try this method of doing it this way. And you just get to it much, much quicker. Um, because oftentimes it's an internal desire and we're trying to make it change outside uh, but really, if we just start inside, we get there. It's it's a really fast process in, in, in making it happen. And, you know, for us, we're saying, yeah, it's it's it start with the end in sight. For us to do that, we go through a lot of journal exercise, a lot of, uh, you know, looking with what you what you value, what you want to create. And, and it's a whole process for us to create this. It's not just like, oh, like, you know, just write down your perfect day. Your perfect day exercise is one of, I don't know how many exercises oh, so we have many. in the Strong Coach program. And that's just the exercises. And then there's the coaching piece of it, which is where we're providing the, the context and supporting that coach where they're at. It's like you're still, you're still trying to feed the baby, wipe its ass. Like, you know, it's, it, that's where the contextual part of it is. And so um, really for us, that's how we make this whole thing work is you got to put the work into this stuff and a lot of this stuff you're not really taking action in it you're just getting to know yourself better 
to see where you're gonna, what direction you're gonna point your business, so you can. Our our process is so you could sprint down that path, not just like walk and figure it out. It's like be so clear, understand how to build that clarity. So if you get it wrong, you just shift it. And um, that's been my experience working with coaches. And you know, I have a great example here for for somebody who's done it completely different than how we started. Yeah. So yeah, for you, buddy. We have we have people in the mastermind who. You know, they, they look at their, their goals they set in the 90-day program, they get in the mastermind and get two months into the mastermind and go, oh, I don't want to do that anymore. And we go, that's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, this is part of the process. If I was committed to the goals I set in business 10 years ago, I'd be fucking miserable. Yeah. And it just it wouldn't fit anymore. So I've gotten very comfortable with shifting them. Um, that's great. And, it, and then another point on coming from the inside out, you're talking about doing the personal work. But building the business from the inside out mm-hmm. is the way to go, is is really start with your sales and marketing process. Your, sell, your marketing and your service and product go hand in hand. They're the same thing. And so we look at mar- market research is product development. Mm-hmm. When you, if you were to go to business school, there would be this conversation. And so in the beginning stages, or if you're already running – uh, coaching business, but you feel out of touch with your customers, get to know your customers so well and find out what it is they need that you can provide and then create an offer specific to that, that very thing that you can solve for them. And there are hundreds of clients that are just like your one or two favorite clients. So what you do is you start generating, oh, when I write my emails, when I make my Instagram posts, when I make my Facebook posts, I'm writing them to this person. Mm-hmm. So you start with a really simple offer and you base your marketing off of that, the words that are on your website, the things that go in your emails, the way your website looks should be something that attracts the type of client you're wanting to bring in. And so you build out a really solid offer. You build out a really uh, uh, solid, you get your sales process down, your ability to ask for money, mm-hmm. to coach people before they, co- and then have them make the commitment and invest in themselves mm-hmm. to work with you. And then it's like, okay, where are they coming from? Oh, I'm going to do more of that. It might be more Facebook. Okay, I'm going to do more Facebook. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to get my lead magnet and my homepage and my website dialed in based on this data. And then finally, you get out to the point where like, oh, I'm doing a bunch of social media stuff. Oh, I might run ads now. The issue is most people put up a fucking website that was copied off of wherever they, you know, some other gym that they liked, and then they start running Facebook ads to it. You might as well just, you know, take your money and flush it down the toilet. And then they say Facebook ads don't work. Yeah. And when you build your business, build it from the inside out. The thing that is closest to the person making the commitment, dial that in. Mm-hmm. And if you do that systematically in a year, you're going to have a well-oiled machine. And your clients have all the answers. That's the coolest part. Yes. Is, even is like even in coaching, like when, when any of us are coaching, it's mostly asking questions and pulling the answers out of your clients. It works the same way with your marketing. You know, hey, favorite client. What problem did you have before you started working with me? What did I do that you liked that helped you solve this problem? And that's your marketing right there. Yeah. And all you have to do is ask them. It's it's so simple. So simple. So simple. You know, but that's if you haven't put energy into that and nobody's told you to literally go sit down and find out how your client speaks, what their true problems are, not, you know, I want to lose weight. Uh, and really dive deep into what's happening underneath. That's take that step if you haven't done it. Uh, it you'll you'll learn a lot uh, for yourself. Uh, that, well, that's one of the biggest thing our our coaches get from going through that process is like I did not know like that about our clients. We had we have a, a coach that went through a program that had uh, personal training clients for over a decade and had no clue why they trained with him. And uh, yeah, if you find out why they train with you, you double down on that. Imagine how many more clients you can receive that could work with you for that uh, length of time. Uh, finding that right, the, the, the type of person that will invest themselves that amount of money for that length of time. And you just gotta find them. And you find them from the clients you're already working with. Yeah. Let's wrap this bad boy up. If you want at least the first three steps, at least the first three steps of how to build your coaching business, go to strongcoachpodcast.com, get that download. What is it, Ben? It is wait, what 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 <laughs> <laughs> three step coaching business tune up. That's right. That's what it is. Three step coaching business tune up. 
That's there right. You go. One more time. Three-step coaching business tune-up. All right. There's a wrap. The single will be coming out later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go to strongcoachpodcast.com, download that, and uh, we have some very specific how-tos in there that's in black and white that's going to be really helpful. Thanks for joining us.